Chapter 35 The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity by Catherine Ponder 1962 In a nutshell, God does not want you to be poor. Appreciate the universe's abundance and your right to prosperity. Catherine Ponder has always been interested in the issue of spirituality and wealth, and when she became a Unity Church minister, she decided to study the Bible more closely. She learned that the identification of piety with poverty had arisen in the Middle Ages, when the feudal system sought to keep people in their place. In childhood, she'd been given to think that a poor Christian is a good Christian, but nowhere in the Bible did she find evidence for this. The more she read, the more she realized that it was a textbook for prosperity. Teaching Prosperity In 1958, when America was in a recession, members of Ponder's congregation were asking her for guidance on how to get through it. She started giving prosperity classes, teaching that prosperity was first and foremost a state of mind. A mindset of lack could only manifest negative results. Many of her members experienced dramatic turnarounds, unexpected raises, promotions, debts paid. Yet what struck Ponder was how many people wondered whether it was right to seek prosperity. That is, whether it was consistent with spiritual values. Didn't the Bible say, You cannot serve God and mammon? Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Didn't Jesus say, How hard is it for them to trust in riches to enter the kingdom? Mark chapter 10, verse 24. Ponder responded to the first question by making a distinction. Mammon is wealth that is worshipped for its own sake. It's wealth without God. Prosperity thinking, on the other hand, puts God first as the source of your supply. She agreed that Jesus had told a wealthy man to go and sell everything he had, but it was because he was still attached to his riches. He did not yet recognize God as the source of his supply. The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity is generally considered to be Ponder's classic work, a carefully and compassionately written compendium of the secrets and techniques of prosperity. The following is a sample of her ideas. Desire plus visualization and affirmation equals success. The brain works in terms of mental images, Ponder writes, and whatever images it has are likely to become reality. You can therefore literally see your way to success. When you create prosperous images from scratch, don't be reasonable. Think big. Project thoughts of increase onto others, and you will find that they do prosper in health and monetary terms. Send positive thoughts to those with whom you're in conflict and watch them soften their stance. That this could work may at first seem incredible, but it is simply an extension of the speaking well of others that you were taught to do as a child. Denouncement has a way of bouncing back on you, but pointing out someone's good points while keeping quiet about their bad is both truthful and prospering. Ponder tells of a man who dared to write out hundreds of times how he wished things to be, rather than fretting about how they appeared at the moment. The man was not deluded, but was simply affirming his good, that is, making firm a desire through the power of speech or writing. Desires are healthy, Ponder says. They're like God knocking on the door of our mind the means by which we can develop our full potential. You cannot expect to be successful, she adds, when you idly drift in a stream of small events and small expectations. The secret of turning desires into reality is to write them down. You must be specific about what you want and when exactly you would like to achieve it, because the fuel of the imagination is detail. Remember the phrase, fortune favors the bold. 
life does seem to clear a path for those who know what they want. Nature respects purpose. Writing things down clarifies your purpose in a way that idle thought cannot. Prosperity is circulation. To attract prosperity, don't ever think about yourself as poor or say that you can't afford something. Count your blessings. Focus on abundance. Look only for opportunities. If you don't have something that you desire, use the vacuum law of prosperity and create room for it by throwing out old goods. Make way for growth. Ponder talks in terms of radiation and attraction. That is, the thoughts that you give out coming back to you in some form. You engage in radiation and attraction all the time, but because you're not properly aware of it, you don't see the error in radiating thoughts of negativity and lack. A person trained in prosperity thinking will be very careful only to think thoughts of prosperity, knowing that nothing but these can attract success back to them. Appreciate the prosperity principle that you've got to give to get. You should expect the very best in life, but you must give full measure for the good you wish to receive in advance. Emerson's famous essay, Compensation, highlighted this basic law of prosperity. Ponder describes a law as a principle that works. The practice of tithing, she argues, puts you in tune with the universal law of circulation. Many people think it old-fashioned, but giving away the first tenth of your income demonstrates to yourself that the universe is an abundant place and that in acknowledgement you're returning some of it to its source, just as the farmer returns one-tenth of his seed for soil enrichment. She notes that some of the magnates of the 20th century, John D. Rockefeller and the Heinz, Colgate, and Kraft families, attributed their amazing success to tithing. Between 1855 and 1934, Rockefeller gave away over $500 million, and when asked why, his standard line was, God gave me my money. Ponder also recalls the words of Moses. Thou shalt remember Jehovah thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. The key point about tithing is that it's systematic giving, not the ad hoc giving that we normally associate with charity. In systematically giving the first 10% of whatever you earn, you'll discover that the remaining money goes further and that the universe will want to give back to you systematically. Tithing is much more than dutiful giving to charity. It is also, Ponder points out, an act of personal growth. It does, after all, require courage, by which one evolves into larger giving and larger receiving. How to See Money People often have a funny attitude about money, Ponder says. They are quick to say that money doesn't mean a lot to them, but spend their lives working to get it. Why not admit that money is important and that it's basic to living a good life, wonderful if rightly used? Money reacts to your attitudes about it, Ponder comments. Therefore, if you think well of it and admire what it can do, you're much more likely to enjoy more of it. See it as a tyrant, and it will be so. Continually remind yourself of the relationship between money and thought. Think of and expect lavish abundance for the day ahead when you wake up in the morning. You may be surprised at what happens. Ponder includes a fascinating reference to Einstein, saying that he shook up the scientific world by proving that substance, or energy, the unformed, is convertible to matter, the formed, which includes money. Einstein showed that the physical and non-physical worlds are convertible and interchangeable. Prosperity thinking acknowledges the connection between the invisible substance or energy that makes up the universe and your thoughts.
By connecting the two, you have greater control over the creation of matter. Final Comments This discussion is merely an appetizer. Most of the 20 chapters of the Dynamic Laws of Prosperity deal with a different prosperity law, covering health, debt, work, persistence, intuition, and a truly unusual chapter on the prospering power of charm. Though the book was mostly written in the late 1950s, many of its ideas were ahead of their time. In the face of the conformity of her era, Ponder dares the reader to be different, noting that uniqueness always pays, and it's your duty to be like no other. If you're an academic Bible scholar, you may not agree with Ponder's interpretation of biblical stories, but the book is best read for inspiration and for its quiet good sense about thinking prosperously. The Dynamic Laws of Prosperity may be one of the more unusual success classics, but could be the most valuable to you if you're willing to have an open mind. The chapter on overcoming debt may on its own justify the price of the book. Consider it a spiritual complement to the more nuts-and-bolts books on financial success. Catherine Ponder Born in 1927, Catherine Ponder studied education and business in North Carolina before being ordained as a non-denominational Unity Church minister in 1958. Her first ministry was in Birmingham, Alabama, followed by Austin, Texas, then San Antonio. In 1973, she moved to Palm Desert, California, where her global ministry continues to this day. Ponder has written 16 books, including The Prosperity Secrets of the Ages, The Dynamic Laws of Healing, The Millionaires of Genesis, The Millionaire Joshua, The Prospering Power of Prayer, and her memoir, A Prosperity Love Story. She has lectured across the United States.